The 18th century was a fascinating time period, for it was the time of the first engine in France, the Revolutionary War of America, but most importantly, it marked the beginning of the textile industry here in Great Britain. Our textile industry grew during the Industrial Revolution, a time period where Europe and the United States began the transition from past to present. Thread, a project created by a local textile artist, Seiko Kanishita, is split into two parts. And our first part explores the development of community and technology right here in Great Britain. It all started in the small hamlet of Falpham. It is the late 18th century. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a dead eye struck. Did I dream of water in the heat of summer? when the chickens pecked at the ground, turning over the same dry earth. I dreamed of water in the well, in caverns, further afield in the rushing river at Dovedale. And I dreamed of those gorges in the body, an industrious inner sea working the organs. And so when I speak of mills, of cotton, of engineers, I must also speak of water and of how on those days when the derwent is low, the roar is still in my mind. The wheel turns, and even the moon, pulling the tides, shines more brightly than the silver back of the heron. Jedi is struck with an industrialist and the father of the struts. During his lifetime, he built several mills, collaborated with world-renowned businessman Sir Richard Arkwright, and created the world's first industrial community. The struts were known for their innovative construction design skills and made history when they designed one of the first fireproof buildings in 1803, which we now know as the Struts North Mill, a museum telling its own history. It was designed by Jedi's eldest son William. One of the reasons it was so important was because it influenced the design in a modern skyscraper. However, this wasn't the first time there were pioneers in the construction industry. In fact, the fireproof North Mill was a much later achievement and was actually a rebuild of the original mill, which burned down. The original North Mill was a collaboration with Sir Richard Arkwright. Jedi approached Arkwright in 1769, interested in his design in a water frame, a piece of machinery that threaded cotton and could be powered using a water wheel, and another piece of unrivaled machinery from a time period that used flowing water to create an energy source. The two subsequently set up a partnership and the water frame was used to thread much of the cotton they produced. They ended their partnership in 1781 and the struts ran the mill themselves. The mill was a huge success and provided Europe with cotton for 20 years. Jedi Strutt passed away in 1797 and left his mill with his sons who ensured it flourished for many decades afterwards. The water frame was a fantastic piece of machinery for the time period and it played a huge part in the transition from man-operated machinery to more automatic machinery, which was a key development during the Industrial Revolution. However, it wasn't the only impressive piece of machinery. As well as the water wheel that we explained before, several other pieces of more automatic machinery became a preference in cotton producer mills. Of course, the technology we have in factories these days completely dwarves the machinery of the 18th century. It is far more advanced and technologically complex. For instance, the robotic technology that is common in car manufacturing. The robot has a computer with a series of programs on it. This carefully uses geometry and time to decide where an item should be placed rotated and attached. Doing so saves time and the likelihood of injuries to workers, ultimately saving money. Similar robotics are used in warehouses like Amazon to transport packages from the storage to the shipping department and back. In the textile industry, we use robots for cutting and cleaning materials. This reduces the need for a human workforce by about 50%. However, in many lower developing countries like Bangladesh, the use of machinery from the industrial revolution is still very popular particularly when it comes to the manufacturing of clothing. For the majority though, the use of robots in the manufacturing industries is an efficient and innovative method of production here in the 21st century. As well as the development in technology, development in law has made the lives of factory workers better in the modern time too. For instance, we have laws in place such as the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974, the Working Time Directory of 2003, and of course the concept of legal working ages. Thanks to these, employees are kept safe and get to return home after the working day, which differs massively to the Industrial Revolution, where such laws weren't in place and working conditions were horrendous, particularly for children. Often factories would employ orphan children as their size allowed them to fit under machines to tie up broken threads. Labour was cheap, and if an accident occurred, they could easily be replaced. Jedi Strutt, however, didn't believe it was fair to treat his employees this way, and so he created the first industrial community. 
He built cottages, chapels, schools and leisure facilities for his workers. This expanded the size of Balpa. Before long, people from neighbouring towns and cities were coming to Balpa looking for work. More businesses were open and to meet these demands, more houses were built, resulting in the large town that Balpa is today. It was this sense of community that inspired Seiko's Lenten Crafting Workshops, which took place during 2019. The project was titled, Reading Through Community. More than 500 local residents, including children, students and adults, took part in these workshops, where they created lanterns influenced by the size and shape of the original cotton bobbin that existed during the Industrial Revolution. The crafting of lanterns encouraged the residents to meet new people, work together and learn about local history, renewing the element of community that existed when the Struts North Mill operated in Balpa all those years ago. Once the lanterns are crafted, they were going to be displayed over Balpa, highlighting the cluster house in the Struts Mill and the historical landmarks that the Derwent Valley World Heritage Site still maintain today. The idea of this was to encourage the residents of Balpa and the surrounding area to understand and appreciate the history of the land they occupy. This lantern display was a real beacon in the community and a chapel light with the people of Balpa's lanterns allowed it to shine even brighter. The evening celebration in October, although it moved to St Peter's Church due to adverse weather conditions, allowed the people of Balpa to meet new people and share the lantern designs with one another. With food and drink at the ready, and the doors open to everyone, people from all over were able to view a presentation that summarised the project. It encouraged the viewers to talk about what they saw, share wisdom, opinions, but most importantly, it allowed them to make new friends, restoring an element of community that is rare in the modern day. We were lucky enough to interview a few of the residents who took part in these workshops, who felt that they learned something while crafting their lanterns. I find it very interesting. That's something I've never done before. I'm really enjoying it. Yes, it's quite therapeutic. Uh, I thought it was really good quite a unique thing as well. And it's good always when you work in a group. It's interaction and you're talking to one another. So it's something I usually do, so it's quite nice to do something different. I've been learning about the history and the talk about Japan as well. That was interesting. I'm not the best dressed and things around. So yes, I am. Very much nice to meet other people and have a chat. It's a nice, cathartic experience. The sense of community that Jedi Struck created was a huge inspiration for the project, but it was not the only one. Red and Free Community also took inspirations from the colours of the countryside in our local area, such as the greens and blues of the Peak District National Park. Seiko then expressed this in a choice of cotton colours that the local residents spread around the lanterns. So there we have it, the 18th century. What a fascinating time period it was indeed. Don't you agree? We hope your views on the time period are much more varied than they were before and hope this has influenced you to put in the effort Seiko did to bring your community together. Every day we can work to make our society a better place. Start small by inspiring your friends and family every day. Or go out to events like these and meet new people. You can help someone you don't know and build long-lasting acquaintances. You could even start your own community engagement project. Whatever you do, always try and keep yourself informed with the past, the present and the future of your local area. For we can't rewrite history, but we can write for the future. If you don't know where to start with this, most towns and cities have a website or blog that keeps you up to date with what is going on in your local community. You can also try discussions with people in local community centres, shops and restaurants. You can learn more about the Struts North Mill and the work of Seiko Kinoshita by visiting the links on screen. This is Stephen Mastin from Creative Media at Chesterfield College. Goodbye. <laughs>